Manufacturing 2020 with Zebra Technologies. Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Manufacturing 2020, a regular podcast about technology and manufacturing from Zebra Technologies. Each time we meet a member of Zebra's partner community who talks about the biggest opportunities and most critical challenges facing their customers and how technology is helping to tackle them. For episode one, we're privileged to have as our guest Robert Freeman of Eagle, a QAD data solution provider with over a thousand customer sites globally. Hello, Robert. Welcome. To start with, can you describe your company and your role within it for us, please? Yes. Eagle provides data collection for the QAD ERP system, and we do that worldwide. Uh, My role is to look after Europe, Middle East and Africa. What are the biggest challenges facing manufacturers today? I would suggest that that would be instability within the world in general. If you look back until 2008, we nearly got complacent. We were used to growth. Yes, there are a few little ups and downs at various stages, but nothing really game-changing. Since that banking crisis, though, things have changed dramatically. We've had some very unforeseen political results where the polls have been completely wrong. That's caused massive currency fluctuations. Banks, which we thought were safe, have failed and are continuing to struggle across Europe. And this is causing massive instability. Therefore, manufacturing has to look at better ways of making things, has to be leaner. Take a weather event, for example. How might that affect the way a manufacturer has to operate? It can act in several ways. For instance, your transportation network will be completely destroyed for up to a week or so. If you look at hurricane events coming in, that will cause problems. Seasonality is another great example of instability. You've got some people in the garden supply industry. Their whole year will be based on two real weekends, Easter weekend and the May Bank holiday weekend. Depending on the weather over those two weekends and what that's forecast to be will depend on how much they manufacture, what type of goods they'll manufacture, because that will really depend on what they'll sell. What do we mean by lean manufacturing? Lean manufacturing is about trying to react very quickly to customer demand. It is trying to also reduce the amount of inventory you would have within your business so that you and have processes which react quickly. So, for instance, if you get an order in, you can quickly get the raw materials to make the finished product. You can quickly adapt to make the specific requirements for your customer and get them out the door quickly without holding large stocks of either raw materials or finished goods. What does lean manufacturing mean for quality and reliability? you've still got to have all those quality processes in place. So, for instance, if you're ordering a high-end car nowadays, you expect to order exactly the option list you want, and the dealers will try and upsell you on a load of additional options. So that means your car is actually hand-built with specific options. However, these cars, you still expect that level of quality, and you still expect the delivery time to be quick, otherwise you will go elsewhere. So you need the speed, but you also expect the quality. So that's lean manufacturing from a plant point of view, but how does it play out through the whole supply chain? That lean manufacturing has to go from the very beginning of the supply chain, so for the raw materials coming into the components, that has to be quick, because if you have reactivity at the end user for the customer, that has to come down all the way through and at each element of the supply chain, from digging the materials out of the ground to giving him their finished product. So lean manufacturing in practice, what does that mean? Um, Let me take an example of a customer. We have one supplier who uses a lot of solvents. That has to be stored in a specific warehouse. The warehouse actually has fire hoses on it constantly in case it goes up. It is nasty stuff. You have to use intrinsically safe electronic devices within that warehouse. No mobile phones, hardly anything electronic within there. It is highly unstable material. Traditionally, they were using a piece of paper. So the goods would arrive, so on a Monday morning, the solvents would arrive, they'd write down the load, they'd check it out. At the end of the day, the piece of paper would go into the internal mail system of the company and would later on end up at a data collection point where somebody would type that in, errors and all, straight into the system. That could be up to two days later. The impact of that is you're caught looking after two days' worth of material. And this is really expensive material both to buy and to store. Moving forward in a lean environment, you would record that solvent using data collection handheld terminals immediately those goods arrive. And that's a really good example of real-time data in action. From the many examples you've seen around the world, Robert, what what are you seeing in terms of work-in-progress tracking? Typically, in an old environment, what you'd see would be goods being issued to a work order and then being received at the end. And actually, that whole middle piece would be missing. So what you often see now is that you can actually break that down into operational level. So that way, you're actually beginning to track the work-in-progress throughout the factory. Instead of being one recording point, you'd have multiple. 
Now, what we'd recommend is also you divide those up. Then you see where there's variability. So you wouldn't divide it up to start with, but then by using flexible handheld computers, you can decide where to deploy those and break that work in progress up into smaller manageable chunks and then work on the areas that you're finding you're having a problem. And what are you seeing in terms of traceability? Again, if you look at when you're receiving goods coming in, you're marking those and you're tracing them using a unique number, be that a batch number, a lot number, or just a general reference number to group things together. You can then track them onto the issue of the work order and the manufacturing. You're then tracing them through the work in progress. So you're seeing what raw material components have then gone into making your finished goods and see at what point those have been consumed. You're then tracing that all the way through. Again, this helps traceability all the way through the supply chain. And how is the identification of items evolving in the era of lean manufacturing? We are seeing much more on-demand label printing requirements coming in. So you're making some components for an automotive manufacturer. Because we talk about the variability in what the customer wants on that vehicle, we're seeing variability in what our customers are having to make for the end user manufacturer. We'll sometimes see a case when a part will come in. It will be identified with the previous level in the supply chain, but we have to identify that in our ERP system. It has to be labelled. It then has to be identified at all points through work in progress and then identified again going back to the end customer. So, Robert, now we're going to talk about the future a bit more. And you must see manufacturers at very different stages on the journey towards lean manufacturing. What's coming next? Well, we're seeing more increase in track and tracing throughout the business, both in the wider supply chain and also within the actual factory itself. So you're talking about using more recording points. And we're also talking about recording different things. That could be tooling. So traditionally, you'd only be recording the inventory, but now you may be recording the tooling. And that can be quite critical, especially if you're getting into process compliance. Not only are we using the right components to make the goods and what batch and recorded batch number are those, are we identifying those components correctly? Are we labelling those components correctly? And are we using the right tools to make that? In summary, I think we're going to see more process recording at mul multiple points. We're going to see recording of people and what they're doing, and also the tools which they're using for making and completing actions. And what else are we seeing in terms of the future of lean manufacturing? Traditionally, we've seen marking of goods using barcodes and on-demand barcode printing and then scanning. Now, what we're seeing is those same printers can often print an RFID label. And instead of having a barcode, you have an electronic voice for that inventory. So then you can use RFID readers and RFID gates to start tracking goods through that. That could be onto a production line. It could be during the production line and then at gates as the goods start leaving the factory. You can then take that further and start using some of the very new technologies and start actually tracking goods anywhere in a warehouse and using location services for actually being able to identify a unique palette of goods anywhere within your facility. The use of all this technology really does help ever proof and stop the issues where sometimes recording would not have been done previously now it is being done truly automatically also this technology is allowing us to record more and more data but at the same time reduce the costs of data collection within a business if you look at it we're actually starting to record more and more data and you often hear the term big data and people get very worried about the cost of this but if you're using the latest technology such as rfid and location services that cost coming down and that might sound counterintuitive but if you look at a current environment, we have people writing stuff down on paper, that takes time. That will then get entered in by somebody else. Again, this is taking time. Or even newer, you're having to scan stuff. But if you're recording that automatically and letting the machines give you that data and that is coming straight into your ERP system, you've actually removed all of that. You can then start recording extra data, extra batch information, all automatically. Again, you're not having to type that in and the amount of errors reduce because it's all happening automatically. And I guess all this relates to the Internet of Things that we keep hearing about. Where does that fit in? Yes, um, increasingly we're seeing with the Internet of Things, machines are being connected directly to the Internet and that internal Internet within a company. So what you can now do is start to connect up your machines directly to the production process, to the ERP system. So you're automatically receiving data in. What does that allow you to do? Well, you're actually getting data real time off the machines recording. If something's going wrong, if something's out of specification, You'll note that immediately. That then can give that information coming back straight onto mobile devices to production staff to go and make corrections immediately before you've made too much and too much waste. So what advice would you give to manufacturers who are beginning the lean manufacturing journey? Day one, look at the pain points. Look at where your real problems are within your business. And you need to be open and honest about those. 
Without that, your project is doomed to failure. And those typical pain points might be? In one company, it could be traceability. So being able to identify that raw material as it comes through the door and trace that all the way through. Another, it could be excess inventory. In another, it could be incorrect process. And do you tend to find that customers generally know what their pain points are? They will have an idea, but no, it can be quite a surprise, especially to management, actually finding out what is really going on on the shop floor. And who is the person who finds out what's what the pain point really is? Hopefully that will be us as a supplier and that would go in and you'll often find that people will talk to us where they may be hiding things from the bosses within that business. So it's a sort of interview situation that will often tease out the pain points. We will try and often walk through the process with the people doing the work. A formal interview, they'll often clam up. If you just go out onto the shop floor with them and walk around and actually see what's happening to inventory, what are they doing? How are they dealing with all of this? How are they making things actually in the real world? And then looking at the flow within the ERP system and then looking for differences and finding those things. And how does someone trying to get a lean manufacturing initiative underway, how do they prove the ROI case? Each business is different. So I think it's very dangerous to say, oh, you'll always get this benefit. For instance, in terms of some people, it'd be quality, be tracking data. It'd be correct identification of finished goods, correct labelling traceability throughout the supply chain. So you would look at how much that's costing to use a traditional paper-based method. Can you improve on that? Others, it is reducing the inventory levels and the cost of inventory and the storage of inventory levels. For others, it will be flexibility and how much it's costing them at the moment to be flexible. A typical ROI, though, for data collection project is within 18 months. It's also worth looking at which area is costing you the most at the moment. So you'll take one small area, divide up your business, do not try and do everything all at once identify a pain point, solve that particular pain point, move on to the next one. So having proven the ROI model in one area of the business, hopefully within 18 months or so, how do you then go about reapplying it? Well, then take your next pain point. Look at the next area that you're having issues with recording data or where you're not having enough data to be able to make management decisions. So can I implement a project like this regardless of the size of my business or does it only work for a huge car component manufacturer, for example? Absolutely. You can be any business. Again, the key is identifying what your pain point is and you work on that specific one. That could be one very small area. You might just want to start with recording of finished goods because that's where your problem is and say the labelling and correct identification of the finished goods, which you're then passing on to your customer. You might want to do that in a very small way. You could equally be a very large manufacturer and want to cover inventory all the way through your internal processes. A data collection project should be totally scalable for your size of business and the particular issues that you wish to cover. KPIs are of course critical when embarking upon this kind of project. Granted every manufacturer will have different goals and targets but what are typical KPIs that we can talk about in terms of this kind of deployment? Cost is the obvious one, making things quickly and getting data in quickly, getting it in on time and getting that information in on time and also that you're making the product on time and also that product should be on specification. And finally safety, with the well-being of the workforce being paramount. Talking about Zebra specifically, what do you see them doing particularly well in the manufacturing space? First, I think it's the whole range of products that Zebra are currently supplying. We then look at the quality of those units. We have to supply good quality units to our customers. Doing back-to-back comparisons with other manufacturers, the Zebra products go back for repair far less often than the other manufacturers. We can also look at the other wide-ranging products, for instance, the RFID, Gate and Readers, which are also Zebra Supply, and looking further forward, going on to the locationing services technology, which they have, being automatically able to track goods around a factory or a warehouse. How is Zebra's technology different from what else might be out there? Well, it's a joint cooperation, so between us and Zebra. So we work together hand in glove, which you do not see with a lot of other hardware suppliers. So that when we're developing products, we will do that with Zebra's laboratories, and we'll have access to them to help us develop our software to take advantage of the features of their hardware. And what are the key operational areas where you see Zebra making a real difference with its technology? I think the newer handheld scanners are very far more robust than before and anything else on the market. And ergonomically, they're far easier to use. Before, you always have questions on repetitive strain. The new scanners are completely different from that. Also, by just the whole range of hardware that they're providing, 
allows us to use much more novel ways of getting that data straight into the ERP systems. So how do you see Zebra increasing productivity throughout the cycle? Let's take goods coming in, raw materials. We identify that raw material with a label which has an embedded RFID tag in. At some point, we still may use the traditional method of scanning it, but then we get it onto a production line where we've got some RFID gates, so we're automatically recording it. If we look at handheld computing, there's a complete range of products which come from Zebra in various form factors. So that can be a small, lightweight device, suitable for certain people and in certain environments, going through to a larger tablet device where we can start displaying more information and taking some of that information from the Internet of Things and getting that through to people and getting more information so they can act quickly to resolve any issues. You also look at the new operating systems available, especially Android, and again, we can start utilising a lot of extra functionality using those operating systems. And finally, Robert, sum up for us what your business plus Zebra's technology can do for manufacturers. With our software and consultancy and Zebra's hardware and technology, we can provide connected visibility for a business. That then gives them the chance to act real time and be a more profitable business. That's it for this time. Thank you for listening to the first edition of Manufacturing 2020, Zebra Technology's regular podcast about technology and manufacturing. Zebra gives you 2020 vision across your manufacturing enterprise and technology fit for 2020 and beyond. Go to www.zebra.com forward slash track hyphen and hyphen trace for more information about what you've heard today and to sign up for the next podcast, which will feature Robert Jones from Vision ID. Manufacturing 2020 with Zebra Technologies. Technologies.